Hey there, art nerds! Look at this beautifious bounty that we have before us. My Derwent Inktense Paint Pan Travel Set, which has been long awaited, has finally arrived. I can't wait to compare it with the original Derwent Inktense Blocks. So if you're curious about how these two compare, keep watching. <laughs> reviewed the Derwent Inktense blocks in another video. You guys can check that out by clicking here. This is a 12 block set. The Derwent Inktense Paint Pan Travel Set is a 12 color set and it looks like they have some similar colors but also a couple of differences. So it's going to be really exciting to go ahead, get this open up and check that out. So let's go ahead and unbox our little travel palette. And inside is a white plastic travel palette. The back of the box says, the Derwin Inktense Paint Pan Travel Set contains the unique Inktense formulation found in our pencil and block ranges. Unlike traditional watercolors, washes of vivid paint can be applied without dissolving previously dried layers. Ideal for travel with everything needed to paint on the go. This set contains 12 highly light fast Inktense paint pans, a mini water brush, a sponge, and five mixing palettes. Inktense is suitable for use on paper and fabric for a wide range of fine art and craft products. And this is made in Britain by ACCO Echo Brands, Oxford House, and again, made in Britain. So we're going to pop this little beauty open. Inside are our 12 half pans. They're actually kind of, not. oh, they're loose. That would explain why we have this here. So these are actually loose and they seem to be using a system similar to what Windsor and Newton uses and what White Knights uses where you can just pop the whole half pan out and there is no writing or color name anywhere on the pan. So you should probably keep track of what went where. And does it name the colors? It does not seem to name the colors here on the box. Now I'm going to check the site, but it looks like there is um, two different yellows, a cooler red, a violet maybe, a ultramarine, a uh, cool shaded blue, like a phthalo blue, a viridian green, a sap green, maybe a spring green, yellow ochre, a burnt sienna, and black. And we're gonna swatch that to find out. Now, I set about ordering these about as fast as I could as soon as I found out about them from the Derwent Instagram. And they were sold out on Dick Blick for about a month. And it seems like some other people have gotten a chance to review them. Some of them do seem like they might be in the UK, so they were probably able to get them in store. So I know my review is a little bit belated. I know other people have kind of beaten me to it. Um, that's how the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. But hopefully I can offer some insight for you guys that maybe other people hadn't covered or maybe a use that wasn't shown. So this reminds me of a bit of a cross between the Sakura Koi field set and the Windsor & Newton, uh, the larger Cotman field set because it has these kind of snap in place trays. The Inktense blocks themselves are not held into the pans by anything so they could very easily fall out and possibly um, start to like grind into dust I guess because we've already started to notice a little bit of that on the sponge. There are five very very shallow mixing wells so you're probably because it's a travel site, you're not gonna be mixing copious amounts of water. And this is a really unimpressive little travel brush. It didn't even come with a top. I know Derwent makes their own travel brushes, so it's like, what the heck, Derwent? What, what is this even? Um, it also, a lot of, there's a lot of like excess space in here that isn't being taken out by the travel brush. So it does feel like a little bit of a waste of space inside the box. And it comes with one of these inexpensive little 
sponges, again, like the Sakura set, so that you can kind of wipe your brush off, clean your brush off with that. The colors inside, like I said, are not listed, but they definitely seem different and more of a primary set of 12 than the Derwent Intense Block set. And as you guys can see, I've experimented with painting with these as watercolor pans. And if you're interested um, and own a set similar to this or some free-floating intent sticks, I know that Lindsay Ware, the Frugal Crafter, has a really cool tutorial on how you can make a very similar, a set very similar to this from these. So if you're having trouble getting this set, that could be a very viable option. However, the colors between the two are different. You might prefer the set's colors and then, you know, why, why get this set if you prefer this one? So our next step is to go ahead and swatch. But first, I'm gonna throw a little bit of information at you guys. Now, in my previous test, I kind of deduced that these might be India ink based rather than say watercolor based. And that would explain why they are very light fast and why they are not very prone to lifting. I found the colors were also very similar to how India Ink performs and I tested several brands of different India Ink products to kind of confirm my hypothesis because it's very difficult to find this sort of information online sometimes and um, even though now I forget the name of the document it's like MS something or other but um, it'll come to me as soon as I quit recording unfortunately. Anyway even though I check the toxicity reports that kind of thing for clues as to what these are made out of and they are by the way completely non-toxic which is nice. Um, I mean I wouldn't recommend eating them but uh, they should be safe in a studio that has kids and pets. Um, but they perform very similarly to other India ink based products so I presume these are an India ink base and maybe use some of the same um, properties that make India ink so indelible once it's dry. So maybe some of the same lacquer. And I'm not really sure how you would do that in a dried form to a wet form to a dried form again without losing some of that. If any of you are chemists or understand the science behind that, I would love to find out what is up, how. So I ordered mine from Dick Blick. It is also available on Amazon for $36.96. This is $36.96. These are actually much cheaper. They're around $25. I'll get you an exact number in a second. So this is going for $24.49 on Dick Blick. And this is going for $25.12 on Dick Blick. According to Blick, the colors included in this set are bright blue, burnt yellow ochre, dark plum, ink black, kiwi, mango, mid ultramarine, natural brown, poppy red, racing green, sun yellow, and teal green. So I think they're staying consistent with their intense color families. And they probably selected the colors that really are best um, for color mixing and that sort of thing. So I know you guys are super eager to see how these compare head to head. I'm super eager to get swatching for you guys. I did my initial swatch of these on a cellulose paper. So I think today we're gonna swatch on a cotton rag paper. So we are going to do our swatching today on Blick Premier watercolor paper. This is 100% cotton rag. I really, really like this paper. It is sort of like a very affordable arches. It's even bound in a way very reminiscent of arches. And the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna lay down some lines like I always do when I do opacity tests. And we're gonna do a couple of tests. We're gonna do a mass tone test and we're gonna do a gradation test. And I am super not a fan of their water brush but that's what I'm gonna use. So I've applied two wonky sets, two wonky pairs of lines to, at the top and at the bottom using a pigment-based brush pin. Pigment-based brush pins are waterproof when dry. And I'm gonna step away for a little while, get the si rinse the sizing out of our very unimpressive brush. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna swatch. This is the included travel water brush. As you can see, it's pocket-sized, but it doesn't come with a cap. 
for some reason. It does come with a stopper. So the plan, what the point of this is you unscrew the top from the bottom and then you recap it to store your water and travel. What I don't understand is given the size of the compartment, which can fit the water brush completely full um, without a cap, is why not include a longer base? This hardly holds any water. It's intended to be separated anyway, so why not include a larger base other than, um, I don't even know if they have a larger one. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of these kind of water brushes and travel palettes. I use water brushes all the time, but um, they're certainly not my favorite. So I also grabbed a cup of clean water and a synthetic brush in case I get a little too frustrated with this. All right, guys, these have had plenty of time to cure. I am going to be a total tease and I'm going to start first with the ink tense blocks. And I'm going to use the synthetic brush I mentioned earlier to do a mass tone swatch. And then I'm gonna go through and do a gradiated swatch using the water brush they included. And then I'll do the same for the pan travel set. my friends so I have finished swatching both sets the top being the travel half pan set the bottom being the ink tents I will say that I found the travel half pan set was very quick to activate and it seemed to deliver more color it was also easier to use the included watercolor brush with these than it was with these so I think there must be something maybe it's all in my head but I think there's something different about the formulation in this as opposed to in these, which justify the existence of both products. Now, I don't think Derwent plans, at least the website and uh, Blick say nothing about buying additional half pans, but I'd love to see them offer them, especially for some of these, like this magenta color, I guess that's fuchsia, or indigo, uh, some of the greens here would make a lovely accent or addition to a set like this, but I really feel like this 12 color set is a very solid start. And really the only one I can think of that I would add is probably a nice fuchsia. So I will see you guys again really soon in another video where we do our, well, actually I could probably do the mud test in this video. So for those of you who don't know, my mud test is when I do several layers of watercolor to see if the colors get muddy, if they lose their translucency, if they start to pick up. The Inktense blocks behaved quite interestingly. I don't want to spoil it, um, but they did not lift up. So I have a feeling the half pans will not lift up either, but you know, there's really only one way to find out. So I'm going to let these swatches finish drying and then I'll get cracking on that. All right, friendos, let's go ahead and get started on that muddiness test. I will move this over here and these over here and then we'll zoom in. And I am only using the half pans for this. Now I would probably use the blocks and the half pans interchangeably. Although I do kind of feel like the half pans are a little more vibrant than the blocks. I don't know, that's probably the color selection, but I really look forward to seeing how these work in a travel palette. And I think this is a really smooth idea on Derwin's part, especially because this is actually cheaper than the 12 block set. And Inktense has a lot to offer. These could be great for doing underglazes, toning and washing. 
The only problem I really have with Intense is they tend to lose a little bit of that color vibrancy. And I think that's because they have um, some India ink or India ink lacquer. So they're just not quite as um, scintillating, I guess, as traditional watercolors. They don't have as much depth to the color. It's a little hard to explain. I'll probably have to do a side-by-side -side swatch comparison at one point. But that doesn't make them a bad product, and it doesn't mean they don't have lots of uses, and it doesn't mean there aren't phenomenal artists who love these watercolors, or rather, these ink colors, I guess. But part of why they feel, to me, a little flat is they don't have any real granulation. So the colors don't have as much variety on the paper. They kind of go down as a very smooth wash. So if you're looking for kind of the ultimate in control, these could also be a really good fit for you. Now I'm gonna also sprinkle a little salt and we'll see if we can get a little bit of salt action going with these. And it looks like indeed we can. Also, like the choice of green, they include a really nice, dark, almost a neutral green. This could be used to blend a neutral tint as well. And I think that was a strong choice as opposed to including an indigo, which many brands will include in these 12 color sets. And I love indigo and I use indigo frequently, but between this sort of muted purple and this sort of muted green, I feel like you can kind of hit the, spe the spectrum of the sort of neutrals you would want to blend or mix. Now there, let me find that natural brown. This really doesn't feel like a natural brown at all. It feels very flat, kind of one dimensional color. There's no granul granulation, there's no sedimentation. It's just kind of a very brown brown. The red, poppy red, that they included also lacks some depth. It would have been nice if they'd included a carmine or um, a darker bluer red since poppy red. Uh, it's kind of an okay middle of the road red. It mixes better, in my opinion, into oranges than it does into purples, as I'll demonstrate by mixing ultramarine in. As you see, it gets a little muddy. Actually, that's a little bit of an interesting color blend going on. I haven't gotten too many interesting color into color blends. That's another thing that's kind of hit or miss with Derwent is if you enjoy doing your color mixing on the page itself, these don't really lend themselves to that too well. So the ultramarine and poppy red kind of blend together into a uh, nice kind of neutral purple. And since this is a 12 color painting set, I think they tried harder to kind of cover the gamut since this is what you would be bringing with you. If you were traveling, you wouldn't necessarily have access to all your other colors or all your other paints. So it's important to be able to get the mixes you need from these 12 colors. And I really look forward to experimenting with that with you guys in our field test video. Now the yellow ochre, or I'm sorry, burnt yellow ochre is a little opaque. And most yellow ochres are a little bit opaque. But using this in your mixes will probably um, muddy the colors a little bit if you try to do layers on top of those. So that's just something to be aware of. Okay, I'm gonna give this a chance to dry and then we're gonna do another layer on top of it. All right, so our first layer has dried. I see we were indeed able to get some salt effects, get a little salt going here. Also got some really nice color mixing here where it mixed naturally on the paper, as well as over here and right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do our next layer. And when I do these mud tests, I typically, um, I'm not really trying to make anything that's going to be attractive. And I do try to do, um, words, goodness, cannot do that today. Anyway, uh, one of the things I'm going to try right now is a little lift a Rooney test. Let's see if we can scrub it off the paper. A little bit, but not really too much. Let's try another color. A little bit, but not really too much. So these are not as prone 
to lifting as some of your other watercolors. And speaking of other watercolors, if you would like to see me do a head-to-head -head test using the Derwent pa uh, paint pan travel set against other more traditional watercolor paints, just let me know in the comments below. I'm always interested in hearing what you guys want to see. Maybe we can demonstrate some of the things that I've been talking about a little bit better if we have a point of comparison. So basically what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm going to try to layer on contrasting colors so we can really see if colors remain vibrant, true, or if they turn kind of muddy, kind of unimpressive, unattractive. It's a little disconcerting how flat some of these colors go down. I mean, this blue, um, this cool shaded blue, what do they call that? Um, bright blue is a beautiful color, but it's so flat that uh, you lose some of that vibrance. We got some ultramarine here. And then uh, dark plum is just kind of a uh, an understated purple. And usually uh, these sort of mixing sets, if they include a purple, will include a dioxine purple. This is the sort of purple that you could easily mix with the right red and the right blue. ultramarine looking at my swatch sheet we actually have a lot of opacity going on here the ultramarine is fairly opaque the uh, yellow ochre the natural brown poppy red the which yellow is this sun yellow so um no that's probably mango now that i look at it kiwi and definitely this darker green, which is, I guess it's racing green. We have racing green, teal green, and where else? There's another green, and kiwi. So, I don't know. When it comes to those kind of color names, sometimes it's harder for me to identify what color they're talking about. Like racing green isn't very descriptive of a color. Maybe it's um, a British or United Kingdom reference that I just don't get. So doing a lot of wet and wet mixing to see how the colors play together. These seem to activate a little bit easier than the intense blocks. And if you're the sort of person who really likes the properties of intense, but maybe the blocks were not really the right form factor for you, these seem to kind of remedy that. Like for me, the blocks are not the best fit. I wouldn't use them all that often, but I like a lot of the properties that Inktense has to offer. And judging by how they design this box, these pans are definitely designed to be replaced. There just aren't any replacements on the market right now. It would be nice to see them offer both replacements and a wider color range. But they layer really nicely, just like the Intense blocks did. Very vivid, bold, bright colors. Um, there is some, oh, drop some water on there. There is some opacity that you do need to keep in mind. They're not as translucent as they promise. I know Intense is really big on the translucent color, or at least promoting themselves as translucent color, but that's not really. There's definitely some tra semi-transparent and opaque colors in their set. These pans also deliver a lot of bright, bold color immediately. You get a lot on your brush when you activate the pans or you run your brush over the pans. So you're gonna wanna keep in mind that you're probably getting a heavier pigment load than you might with other brands. You can kinda adjust your techniques accordingly. Right, I am going to give these a chance to dry. All right, guys, the second layer has dried. The colors seem to be still vibrant, still very intense colors. As you guys can see, they're fairly flat, though they don't quite scintillate the way other types of watercolors do, even though we're using the same watercolor paper that I've been using for most, or for many of my nicer watercolor swatches. So I can't wait to see you guys for our field test. I may end up doing a couple of different 
field test. There's a couple different directions. I'm tempted to take this set in. I want to see how well it handles painting people. And I'm curious how well it handles is just like a general all-rounder. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, helping me unbox the Derwent Inktense Paint Pan Travel Set using the Inktense technology. I hope this was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. If you guys are looking for more watercolor reviews, stick around, check out my watercolor playlist. I've got loads of great watercolor reviews, tips, tricks, and tutorials. When you're finished with that, you can head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basic series, which is a large spanning tutorial series to teach you how to paint watercolor comics. And if watercolor comics sounds cool to you, make sure you check out my watercolor comic, 7inch Kara, over at 7inchcara.com or 7inchcara.tumblr.com. As always, it was a pleasure, and I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye, guys.